Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who are with us today. And for those who will listen in on the archives, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. It is April 23rd, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. It is Nissan 22. 5782 on the Hebrew calendar, and it is Omer 7. So we are counting the Omer or counting the days leading to Shavuot or Pentecost. So this is the seventh day of counting the Omer. It is also um, still Pesach Shabbat until sundown today. It is the eighth day. Um, It is the final day of the Passover week, um, and um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, of course, goes for seven days, and that began last Saturday. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. I have a few announcements. Of course, there's not going to be as much activity in the upcoming week um, as there has, has been in the previous week. Um, We do have Holocaust Memorial Day, um, and that is coming up on the 28th, and that is Yom HaShoah, and so we um, do want to definitely um, pay respect to that. Um, It it is a day to remember those that were lost in, in that horrific ordeal of the Holocaust. And, um, we're going to tie in, of course, all week, this this past week, there was readings for every day. We are going to tie in day seven and day eight together. Um, however, we're not going to read the Song of Songs or what is known as the Song of Solomon. Um, that, that's pretty long to read all of that. But we have a lot of scripture readings anyway for today. Um, so in the upcoming week, we have the Bible study that is coming up. Uh, we're going to be beginning the book of Deuteronomy, um, chapters 1 through 11. And we're, we're actually using the English Standard Version uh, for our Bible study currently. And also, we are going to meet live in real time on, on our free conference call.com channel on Tuesdays. We meet every Tuesday. We are going to um, actually, by request of, of, of members that, that do come on a routine basis, uh, we are going to actually um, move the hour up this coming week and, and probably ongoing um, to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you've wanted to come in earlier um, and could not, um, we're, we're actually going to try it. We had tried it before, um, and uh, for some reason we had to move it to 8 o'clock. But we are going to move it up to 7 o'clock because that seems to be uh, the time that is going to work best for um, for everyone. So come join us. Uh, we meet live in real time. And you can join by phone. You can join by web, by website. And we'd love to have you. Um, I do post on the four social media platforms how to connect. And um, there is there's links to either the phone or to the web. So if you want to join by phone and dial in, um, absolutely you can do that. And um, you will link onto a drop down menu. And that drop down menu will give you the free list that they gave us. Now, don't be concerned that it says toll. Even the United States number says toll, and it is not. This is actually the free list that they gave us. Um, so by all means, um, come join us. And there's a multitude of countries um, that can join. And yes, it it does work because we've had people in from, uh, at the beginning, we've had people in, in from India. Um, so yes, so come join us. You would probably, what you would be dialing is your in-country number and you would wait for the prompt to enter the access code. And the access code is the same for everyone. And that is listed at the top of the list, I believe. Um, now, if you're going to join by web, it might be easier to, what you would do is click on the link 
And of course, you know, if you're using a computer, that tab would come up. It would, it would, um, it would actually have you download. Uh, if you're on your phone, it's going to have you download the phone app. Uh, if you're on the web, it, it, you will have the web app. So both of them are safe. I have had them on my computer for a long, long, long time because I was doing college courses um, on freeconferencecall.com. I actually prefer this better than Zoom. Zoom does not work for me at all, uh, unfortunately. Um, so any anyway, um, this is this is what you would do you would you would run it like you would run you know you would download the app and then you would run the exact exact like you do any any other uh application and then follow the prompts into the conference room and what you'll find is there's a built-in microphone for you to communicate as well so there is also a chat room um in in the the conference room if you join online so and it's it, it works really nicely. So anyway, um, if you want to try your access beforehand, um, you can do it. At, you can actually test it out anytime um, to see if you have access. You know, if you, you can access it without difficulty. Um, and the only thing that will happen is you, it, it, it will tell you the host has not yet joined and start playing music. So, um, but at least you'll know that you can you can access it. And we use this um, for prayer, um, for spiritual warfare prayer, intercessory prayer. Uh, we use it for praise and worship. We have used it in the past for teaching. I did a seven series, seven week series on the churches of Revelation. Uh, I did a Tishba of uh, evening, um, a teaching on Tishba of, and I also um, had extended this to um, other ministries such as praise and worship ministries. If you are a musician and you would like to uh, have us host you to promote what you do, uh, we would love to do that as well as writers. Um, we've had we've had writers on as well. And we do have the ability to do an MP3 recording and an MP4 recording um, so that what would happen is we would do that and I would email you a copy of that so that you could just take that and promote it any way you want to. Um, it's our ministry's way of tithing into you and promoting what you're doing for the kingdom. And, and as, as a body of Messiah, we do need to work together. So we'd be glad to to promote whatever it is that you're doing to promote the kingdom. So if that is you and you are interested, you can reach out to me and we can definitely set something up. Um, we we definitely would need to know that you have access that you know ahead of time. So um, so and what would happen is when you would the 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 night that you would come on um, to um, that we would be hosting you. Um, I would just introduce you and then everybody would mute and the floor would be yours. Um, so, um, so if that interests you, please reach out to me. If anyone is having trouble accessing also, uh, please reach out to me. So I believe that is it for the announcements for this upcoming week. Like I said, it's a lot quieter this week than it was, uh, let this this past week so um because we we are now um ending the the holidays and with that i am going to open with our opening prayer and we're going to begin shabbat and invite the holy spirit in to lead us through this entire shabbat avina Mulcano, our father our king we thank you First, for the breath that you breathe into our lungs, you are the giver of life. You're the creator of all things. And we give you honor and glory and praise. For there is no one like you, Father God. And we thank you for this day that you have declared holy and separate from all other days. This is Shabbat. This is the holiest day of the week. And we are here to honor that. We love you, Father God. And we ask your Holy Spirit to come guide us, lead us, direct us. 
Open the eyes of our heart and open the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to your message, to your word. And your word is holy, faithful, and true. And we love your word, Father God. We love what you have given us. We love that you have taken time to give us your word. Because you loved us that much to communicate with us. And we're here to honor you on this Sabbath. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And say with me now, the Lord's greatest commandment, the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod Melchuto Le'olam Vayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And the second greatest commandment, Yeshua said, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he said the entire Torah and prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah standing before God, we're going to say three of the blessings. The first blessings, blessing is the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac and God of Jacob the great, mighty, and awesome God, God Most High, who bestows loving kindness and creates all who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants for the sake of his name. In love, King, Helper, Savior, and Shield. Blessed are you, Adonai, Shield of Abraham. And the second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion. Gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, Master of Might? And who can compare with you, O King, who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish? You are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is Kedusha, holiness. You are holy and your name is holy and the holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Matavu, how lovely. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow in worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor. O oh God, in your great love, answer me with the truth of your salvation. In its Kaim, the tree of life declaration, we say this of the Torah. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. Bayam Haku in that day. And it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be Echad, and his name Echad. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified. Amen in the world that he created by his will, and may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to, sp to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer, amen, in your lifetime, and in your days, and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon, and say amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever, blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded, be the name of the Holy One, Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing in song, praise, and consolation spoken in the world, and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel 
and say amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and all Israel and say amen. And in Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 8, it says, Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. Say with me now the blessing of Messiah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher neten lenu devar hakeim Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, who has given us the word of life, the Messiah Yeshua. Say with me now. Messiah's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive it. Give us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar for the children of Israel to come to worship. And we are going to do that as well. I am going to pause it now for you to go listen to some praise and worship. I cannot upload it on this upload because of uploading it to the various social media platforms and also uploading it to YouTube because of the potential to have a copyright infringement. So what I usually do is I post a series of songs on the social media platforms. If you're on those platforms of MeWe, Gab, USA.life and Facebook. And also, like like I said, it's um, this is uploaded to the YouTube channel. But on the YouTube channel, there are no songs. But on the social media, I do post songs. So I will post a series of songs, and then I will post part one. And that first series of songs can go to part part one. I'll part, post part one and part two of Shabbat. Then I'll post another series of songs. The second series of songs can go to part two. And if you prefer to, to use your own praise and worship songs, uh, by all means, uh, this is the time to do that. We do not omit praise and worship. Praise and worship is a, 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 a essential. It's an essential to any service. And it's also a tool of spiritual warfare. Um, we need to we need to have praise and worship in our lives and in our services. It is so important. We were made, we were created to praise and worship our creator. So by all means, we, we do not delete it. Uh, it's just we can't include it in the upload. But we are giving you time to, to do praise and worship uh, at this time. So I'm going to pause it and then we're, we're going to come back with the Torah portion. Okay, we have quite a bit um, of scripture in the Torah portion. Um, the first one um, we're going to read is from Exodus chapter 13, beginning with verse 17, going all the way through to um, uh, chapter 15 to the very end, to the 27th verse. Okay. This actually begins with Parashat Beishalat, which we've already done um, in, a, in a previous Shabbat service. After Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not lead them along the road to the land of the Philistines, although that was nearby. For God said, 
the people might change their minds if they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness to the Sea of Reeds. And Benai Israel went up out of the land of Egypt armed. Moses also took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made Benai Israel swear an oath, saying, God will surely remember you, and then you are to carry my bones away with you. So Joseph prophesied and, and over um, the fact that they would carry his bones out of Egypt with them, and he had them promise, and that promise went on um, to this generation that actually left Egypt. Moses also took the bones of Joseph with him, um, and so they sojourned, so they journeyed from Sukkoth and encamped in Etham on the edge of the wilderness. Adonai went before them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light. Imagine that, you know, knowing God was with you the whole way, leading you the whole way. Um, imagine being in his presence through that whole journey. So they could travel both day and night, the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, never departed from the people. And God was leading them, protecting them. And then we go into chapter 14, Sea of Reeds Showdown. Here we go. And I spoke to Moses saying, speak to Benai Israel so that, that they turn back and encamp before pi Hahara between Migdal and the sea. You are to camp by the sea opposite Baal Zeph Zephon. Pharaoh will say concerning Benai Israel, they are wandering aim aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. I will harden Pharaoh's heart so he will follow after them and I will be glorified over Pharaoh along with all his army. And the Egyptians will know that I am Adonai. So they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled Pharaoh and his servants had a change of heart toward the people. And they said, what is this we have done that we let Israel go from serving us? So he prepared his chariots and took his people with him. He took 600 of the finest chariots along with all other chariots of Egypt and captains over them. Adonai hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so he pursued Benai Israel, for Benai Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued them with all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, as well as his charioteers and his army, and overtook them as they were encamped by the sea, beside Pai Paharath, uh, opposite Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, Benai Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. So they were terrified. And Benai Israel cried out to Adonai. They said to Moses, Have you taken us away to die in the wilderness because there were no graves in Egypt? Why have you dealt this way with us to bring us out of Egypt? Did we not say to you in Egypt, Let us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians? It was better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of Adonai, which he will perform for you today. You have seen the Egyptians today, but you will never see them again ever. Adonai will fight for you while you hold your peace. Then Adonai said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell Benai Israel to go forward, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand, over the sea and divide it. Then Benaiah Israel will go into the midst of the sea on dry ground. Then I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will go in after them so that I will be glorified over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians will know that I am Adonai when I have been glorified over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Well, Pharaoh thinks it's one of his gods that is, is, is allowing this to happen, but he finds out <laughs> um, as the sea is closing in on him. Uh, then the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. Also the pillar of cloud moved from in front and stood behind them and so came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel was the cloud and the darkness over here, yet it gave light by night over there. 
Neither one came near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Adonai drove the sea back with a strong east wind throughout the night and turned the sea into dry land. So the waters were divided. Then Benai Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, while the waters were like walls to them on their right and on their left. But the Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came about during the morning watch that Adonai looked at the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and caused the army of the Egyptians to panic. He took off their chariot wheels and caused them to, to drive heavily so that the Egyptians said, Get away from the presence of Israel, for Adonai fights for them against the Egyptians. Then Adonai said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters come back upon the Egyptians over their chariots and their horsemen. So Moses stretched his hand out over the waters and the sea returned to its strength at the break of dawn. The Egyptians were fleeing from it, but Adonai overthrew them in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and the entire army of Pharaoh that went after them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But Benai Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were like walls to them on their right hand and on their left. So Adonai saved Israel that day out of the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When Israel saw the great work that Adonai did over the Egyptians, the people feared Adonai, and they believed in Adonai and in his servant Moses. The Song of Moses and Miriam. Then Moses and Benai Israel sang this song to Adonai. I will sing to Adonai, for he is highly exalted, the horse and its rider. He is thrown into the sea. Adonai is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will glorify him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. Adonai is a warrior. Adonai is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he hurled into the sea, and his chosen captains. captains have sunk into the sea of reeds. The deeps cover them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Adonai, is glorious in power. Your right hand, Adonai, dashes the enemy to pieces. In the greatness of your excellency, you overthrow those who resist you. You send forth your wrath. It consumes them as stubble with the blast of your nostrils. The waters piled up. The floods stood upright as a heap. The deep became firm ground in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall gorge on them. I will draw my sword, my hand will destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, Adonai, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in praises, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. You, in your loving kindness, let, led the people. You have redeemed. You guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. When the peoples hear, they will tremble. Anguish was, will seize the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom are terrified. Trembling grips Moab's mighty men. All of Canaan's inhabitants will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them. By the greatness of your arm, they will become still as a stone. So your people cross over at a night till the people whom you purchase crossover. You bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, the place at Adonai that you have made for yourself to dwell in, the sanctuary at Adonai which your hands have prepared. At Adonai will reign forever and ever for Pharaoh's horses with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea. But at Adonai brought the waters of the sea back over them. Yet Benai Israel walked in the midst of the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with, dan with dancing, as Miriam sang to them. Sing to Adonai, for he is highly exalted, the horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Now I'm going to continue. Bitter waters made sweet, then Moses led Israel onward from the Sea of Reeds. They went out into the wilderness of Shur, but they traveled three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, 
they could not drink from the waters because they were bitter. On account of this, it was called Mara. So the people complained to Moses, saying, What are we going to drink? So he cried out to Adonai, and Adonai showed him a tree. When he threw it into the waters, they were made sweet. Then he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. He said, If you diligently listen to the voice of Adonai your God, do what is right in his eyes, pay attention to his mitzvah, and keep all his decrees. I will put none of the diseases on you, which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am Adonai who heals you. So you know all the diseases and the plagues and all of that. That is what he's referring to. Then they came to Elim, where there, there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees. So they camped there by the waters. And that's the end of the first Torah reading. The second, we have Exodus chapter 33, verse 1 through um, chapter 34, verse 35. Then Ananias said to Moses, leave, get out of this place, you and the people that you have brought out of the land of Egypt into the land, which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your seed. I will send an angel before you. I will drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites. Hivites and the Jebusites head up into a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not move within the midst of you so that I do not destroy you along the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. Well, they had been mumbling, grumbling, and, <laughs> and causing all kinds of problems for Moses, and, you know, God had to deal with all of that, in, you know, um, with providing for them. And Moses had just, prior to the... To, to him saying this had um had told him told him to blot um to have, uh, actually Moses had 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 actually told him um to forgive their sin and not blot blot them out of the book that was written um so they had <laughs> they had been doing quite a bunch of things um as we know, they had um, they had just done the molten calf, and so Moses was constantly interceding for him. It's kind of like a type and shadow of Yeshua, who is our forever intercessor um, with um, in the heavenlies. So, okay, when the people heard these dreadful words, they mourned, and no one put on any ornaments. At a night, said to Moses, "Say." to Benai Israel, you are stiff-necked people. If I were going up among you for one moment, I would consume you. Take off your ornaments so that I may consider what to do to you. So Benai Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. Show me your glory. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. So it happened, everyone who saw it, Adonai would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would arise and stand, everyone at the door of his own tent, and look after Moses until he had gone into the tent. After Moses entered, the pillar of cloud descended, stood at the door, and he would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all rose up and worshipped every man at the entrance of his own tent. So Adonai spoke with Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not leave the tent. So Moses said to Adonai, You say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my eyes. Now then... I pray, if I have found grace in your eyes, show me your ways, so that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider also that this nation is your people. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest, he answered. But then he said to me, if your presence does not go with me, don't let us go up from here. Or how would it be known that I or your people have found favor in your sight? Isn't it because you go with us that distinguishes us? from all the people on the face of the earth? And I answered Moses, I will also do what you have said. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Then he said, please show me your glory. 
So he said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you and call out the name of Adonai before you. I will be gracious toward whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will be merciful. But he also said, you cannot see my face for no man can see my face and live. Then Adonai said, see a place near me. You will stand on the rock. While my glory passes, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed. Then I will take away my hand and you will see my back, but my face will not be seen. Adonai said to Moses, carve for yourself two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write upon them the words that were on the first tablets, which broke. Be ready by the morning, come up to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. No one is to come up with you and do not let anyone be seen throughout the entire mountain. Even the flocks and herds must not graze in front of that mountain. So he carved two tablets of stone like the first. Then Moses rose up early in the morning, went up onto Mount Sinai as Adonai had commanded him and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Then Adonai descended in the clouds, stood with him there, and he called on the name of Adonai. Now, here are the 13 attributes of God. Now, during the week, we also read the these attributes. So we're going to, going to read them now. Then Adonai passed before him and proclaimed, Adonai, Adonai, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth, showing mercy to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means leaving the guilty unpunished, but bringing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Then Moses quickly bowed his head down to the earth and worshiped. He said, if now I have found grace in your eyes, my, my Lord, let my Lord please go within our midst. Even though this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your own inheritance. Exclusive covenant. Then he said, I am cutting a covenant. Before all your people, I will do wonders such as have not been done in all the earth. Or in any nation, all the people you are among will see the work of Adonai. For what I am going to do with you will be awesome. Obey what I am commanding you today. Behold, I am going to drive out the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites before you. Watch yourself and make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, or they will become a snare among you. Instead, you must break down their altars smash their pillars and cut down their Asherah poles. For you are to bow down to no other God because Adonai is jealous for his name. He is a jealous God. See that you do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Otherwise, when they prostitute themselves with their gods and sacrifice to their gods, someone will invite you and you will eat from their sacrifice. Do not take their daughters for your sons, for their daughters will prostitute themselves with their own gods and cause your sons to prostitute themselves with their gods. You are not to make for yourself metal gods. You are to keep the feast of matzah for seven days. You are to eat matzah as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Eve, for in the month of Eve you came out from Egypt. Every firstborn of the womb is mine, and from all your cattle you are to sanctify the males, the firstborn of the ox and sheep, a firstborn donkey you are to redeem with a lamb, but if you do not redeem it, then you are to break its neck you must redeem all your firstborn sons. No one should appear before me empty-handed. For six days you will work, but on the seventh day you will rest. During plowing time and harvest you must rest. You are to observe the Feast of Shavuot, which we will be doing that in June, early June. Uh, and the first fruits of the wheat, the wheat harvest, as well as the Feast of Ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times during the year all your males are to appear before Adonai Elohim, God of Israel, for I am going to cast out nations before you then and enlarge your territory so no one will covet your land when you go up to appear before Adonai your God three times in the year. You are not to offer the blood of sacrifice with Hamas, and that, that is with leaven or yeast. Nor should the sacrifice of the Passover festival remain until morning. You are to bring the choice's first fruits 
to your land, to the house of Adonai your God. You must not boil again in its mother's milk. Then Adonai said to Moses, write these words for based on these words, I have cut a covenant with you and with Israel. So he stayed there with Adonai for 40 days and 40 nights. And he did not eat bread or drink water. He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the ten words. And we also know them as the ten commandments. Now it happened when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand. When he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face was radiant because God had spoken with him. When Aaron and all B'nai Israel saw Moses, the skin of his face shone in rays, so they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to them, so Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all B'nai Israel came near, and he gave them all the, the mitzvah that Adonai had spoken to him in Mount Sinai. Now we know the mitz, mitzvah is commandment. When Moses was done speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But when Moses went before Adonai so that he could speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. When he came out and spoke to B'nai Israel when, when he was commanded, B'nai Israel saw the face of Adonai that, um, I'm sorry, the face of Moses and that the skin of his face glistened. So Moses put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with him. And next we have Numbers chapter 28 verses 16 to 31. Pesach Passover. On the 14th day of the first month is Adonai's Passover. On the 15th day there is to be a feast. For seven days matzah will be eaten. You are to hold a sacred assembly on the first day. You are not to do any laborious work. You are to offer to Adonai burnt offering by fire two young bulls, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old. They are to be flawless. You are to offer their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah per bull, two-tenths per ram, and one-tenth per each of the seven lambs, plus one goat for a sin offering, to atone for yourselves. In addition to the morning burnt offering and regular burnt offering, you are to offer these just like this. You are to offer each day for seven days the food to be offered by fire for each day as a pleasing aroma to Adonai beside the regular burnt offering with its drink offering on the seventh day. You are to have a sacred assembly and you are to do no laborious work. Shabbat, the Feast of Weeks. On the first day of first fruits, when you when you offer to Adonai a new grain offering during the Feast of Weeks, you are to have a sacred assembly. You are to do no laborious work. You are to offer as a pleasing aroma a burnt offering to Adonai, two young bulls from the herd, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old. With each bull, there is to be a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil and the ram, with a ram two-tenths. And with each lamb, one-tenth plus one male goat to make atonement for you. In addition, you are to prepare the regular burnt offering with, with its grain offering and its drink offering. They are to be without defect. And then we have the final um, reading from the Torah. We are going to go from... Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 19 to chapter 16 verse 17. All the firstborn males that are born in your herd and your flock you are to consecrate to Adonai your God. You are to do no work with the firstborn of your herd or share the firstborn of your flock. You are not to eat it before Adonai. Year, I'm sorry, you are to eat it before Adonai your God year after year in the place Adonai chooses you and your household, but it is, but if it has any ble blemish, it is, or if it is lame or blind, or has any serious blemish, you are not to sacrifice it to Adonai, your God. You are to eat it, eat it within your gates, the unclean and the clean together, just as they eat the gazelle or deer, only its blood you are not to eat. 
you must pour it out on the ground like water. Three harvest festivals. Observe the month of Aviv and keep the Passover to Adonai your God. For in the month of Aviv, and, and this is the bi biblical month before it was changed, of course. Um, Adonai your God brought you out from Egypt by night. You were to sacrifice the Passover offering to Adonai your God from the flock and the herd in the place Adonai chooses to make his name dwell. You are not to eat hamets with it. For seven days you are to eat matzah with it, the bread of affliction. For you came out from the land of Egypt in haste. Do this so that all the days of your life will, you will remember the day when you came out from the land of Egypt. No hamets should be seen with you in all your territory for seven days. And none of the meat you sac sacrifice on the evening of the first day may be left overnight until morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover offering within any of your gates that Adonai your God is giving you. Rather, at the place Adonai your God chooses to make his name dwell, there you will sacrifice the Passover offering in the evening at sunset, the time of your coming out from Egypt. You are to cook and eat it at the place Adonai your God chooses. Then you will turn around in the morning and journey home. For six days you are to eat matzah, and on the seventh day there is to be a solemn gathering for Adonai your God. On it you are to do no work. Seven weeks you are to count for yourself from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain. You will begin to count seven weeks. Then you will keep the feast, feast of Shavuot to Adonai your God with a measure of free will offering from your hand, which you are to give according to to how Adonai your God blesses you. So you will rejoice before Adonai your God in the place Adonai your God chooses to make his name dwell. You, your son and daughter, slave and maid, Levite and outsider, orphan and widow, in your midst, you will remember that you are you were a slave in, in Egypt and you are to take care and do these statutes. You are to keep the feast of Sukkot. Now, this is for seven days. Now, this is in the fall. After gathering in the produce from your threshing floor and wine press, so you will rejoice in your feast, you, your son and daughter, slave and maid, Levite and outsider, orphan and widow within your gates. Seven days you will feast to Adonai your God in the place he chooses, because Adonai your God will bless you in all your produce and in all your work of your hand, and you will be completely filled with joy. Three times a year, all your males are to appear before Adonai your God in the place he chooses. At the Feast of Matzah, so this is the, the Passover week, um, and the Feast of Shavuot, and the Feast of Sukkot. No one should appear before Adonai empty-handed, the gift of each man's hand, according to the blessing Adonai, your God, has given you. And that is the end of the Torah portions for today. So we definitely did read um, on the seventh day of Passover. Um, um, it, we this is when it's read, but we read it today. Um, that the sea split for Benai Israel and drowned the pursuing Egyptians. Um, and the song at the sea that was sung by the people upon their deliverance. And the feasts were also uh, re addressed and reiterated to uh, Benai Israel. Also, um, we read where. Um, <laughs> this was after they had um, done uh, done evil in the sight of God by building a, a, the idol, the golden calf. Um, and Moses, of course, we know had broke, he smashed the first two uh, tablets that they had been, the Ten Commandments had been written on. So Moses was going up uh, again to get them. And um, he was again interceding for the people. Ten Commandments were, were actually given and actually Moses successfully brought them down and uh, he had been in the glory of God so his face glistened. He also um, got God to actually promise uh, a covenant um, that he would be with the, the, the people of Israel and he would, you know, he would definitely um, be their God. So we're going to move in now to this, a, a short recapping of everything that we read. Um, we're going to move into the half Torah portions. And we're going to begin with 2 Samuel. We're going to read the entire 
chapter of 22. So um, that is actually 22 verses 1 through 51. David's songs of valor and last words. David spoke to Adonai the words of this song in the day that Adonai delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, this is this is a parallel to what happened with Benai Israel and with Moses that Adonai delivered them. So now um, David is singing a song. Remember the song of Moses. Now this is David's song to Adonai. Adonai is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock. In him I take refuge, my shield, my horn of salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior. You save me from violence. I called upon Adonai worthy of praise, and I was rescued from my enemies. For waves of death encompassed me, torrents of Belial overwhelmed me, cords of death entangled me, snares of death came before me. In my distress I called upon Adonai, yes, I called to my God. From his temple he heard my voice, my cry came into his ears, then the earth rocked and quaked, the foundation of heaven trembled, they reeled because he was angry, smoke rose from his nostrils and consuming fire from his mouth. Coals blazed from him. He parted the heavens and came down, and with a thick darkness under his feet, he rode upon a cherub and flew. He was seen on the wings of the wind, and he made darkness as a sukkah around him. A mass of waters, thick clouds of the skies out of the brilliance before him, coals of fire flamed out. Adonai also thundered from heaven, and Elion gave forth his voice. He shot arrows and scattered them, lightning bolts and, and routed them then the ravens of the sea appeared the foundations of the world were exposed by the rebuke of adonai at a blast of the breath of his nostrils he reached down from on high and he took hold of me he drew me out of mighty waters he delivered me from my powerful enemy from those who hated me for they were much stronger than me they came against me in the day of my calamity but adonai was my support he brought me out to a wide open place. He rescued me since he delighted in me. And I rewarded me for my righteousness, for the cleanness of my hands he repaid me. For I kept the ways of Adonai and did not turn wickedly from my God. For all his judgments are before me. As for his rulings, I do not turn away from them. I also had integrity with him and kept myself from my sin. So Adonai rewarded me for my righteousness according to, the, to my cleanness in his eyes. With the loyal, you deal loyally. With the blameless, you are blameless. With the pure, you show yourself pure. But with the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You save lowly people, but your eyes are on the haughty. You will humble them. For you are my lamp, Adonai. Adonai shines in my darkness. For with you, I rush on a troop. With my God, I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of Adonai is pure. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides Adonai? And who is a rock besides our God? God is my strong fortress, and he keeps my way blameless. He makes my deers, my legs like a deer and sets me on my heights. He trains my hands, he tr who trains my hand for battle so my arms can bend a bronze bow. You gave me your shield of salvation, and your answering has made me great. You broadened my steps beneath me, so my feet have not slipped. I pursue my enemies and destroy them. I will not return till they are consumed. I consume them and crush them till they cannot rise. Well, that's definitely a parallel. You know, thinking about Pharaoh and his army, they could not rise out of the sea once the sea covered them. Um, so there is a definite parallel here. Um, yes, they fall beneath my feet. You girded me with strength for battle. You made those rising up against me bow down before me. You also made my enemies turn their backs to me. I cut off those who hate me. They look, but there was none to save. To Adonai, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as the dust of the earth. I stamped and crushed them like mud of the streets. You free me from strife of my people. You you kept me as head of the nations. People I did not know are serving me. Children of foreigners cringe before me. As soon as they hear, they obey me. Children of foreigners lose heart and come trembling from their hideouts. Adonai lives, and blessed be my rock. Exalted be God, the rock of my salvation. God, 
he gives me vengeance and brings down people under me. He brings me out from my enemies. Indeed, you lift me up above those who rise up against me. You deliver me from the violent man. Therefore, I praise you among the nations that I and I, I will sing praises to your name. He is a tower of salvation to his king. He shows loyal love to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forever. And that's the first reading of the Hathorah. And you can see with this reading of the, uh, of this portion, um, it describes the song King David composed in his old age, echoing the weekly Torah reading, um, where Moses delivered his parting words to um, the Jewish nation in song form, um, Mo the song of Moses. Um, David's song expresses gratitude to Adonai for saving him from all his enemies. And he starts with the famous words, the, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. He goes on to describe the pain and hardships that he encountered and reiterated that he always turned to Adonai in his moments of distress. And as we see through the life of, of David, he absolutely did. And he recounts Adonai's reaction to those who tormented him. Um, and that he, he was able to, um, to be victorious over them. And David, his attributes, uh, he, he attributed his salvation to his uprightness in following Adonai's ways and that he was rewarded for, for, for following Adonai. And his song ended with his expression of thankfulness and saying, therefore, I will thank you, O Lord, among the nations and, and to your name I will sing praises. And he gives great salvation to his king, and he performs kindness to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. And we know Yeshua uh, came from that seed. He is part of the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So now these were the last words of, of David, um, son of Jesse, um, as far as that song to Adonai. Now that's the half Torah portion that we would that was read yesterday. Um, today uh, we have Isaiah chapter ten verses thirty two to chapter twelve uh, verse six. This very day he will halt at Nod. He shakes his fist at the mountain of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold. The Lord Adonai Sabaoth will lop off the branches with terror. So there again, the Lord is coming to Benai Israel's defense. So the tall ones will be cut down and the lofty ones laid low. Yes, he will hack down the thickets of the forest with iron and Lebanon with its majesty will fall. Chapter 11, a branch from David and a shoot will come forth out of the stem of Jesse and a branch will bear fruit out of his fruits. The Ruach of Adonai will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and insight, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of Adonai. His delight will be in the fear of Adonai. He will not judge by what he, his eyes see, nor decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the poor of the land. He will strike the land with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He will slay the wicked. And also righteousness will be the belt around his loins and faithfulness the belt around his waist. Now this is a prophecy of Yeshua, of course. The messianic age of Shalom, the wolf will dwell with the lamb. And the leopard will lie down with the kid, the calf, and the young lion, and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze. Their young ones lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play by a cobra's hold, hold, and a weaned child will put his hand into a viper's den. They will not hurt or destroy. In, a, in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of Adonai as the waters cover the sea. And that'll be well, in the Messianic age of Shalom, the millennial reign. The second return from diaspora, it will also 
come about in that day that the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will seek for him, and his resting place will be glorious. It will also come about in that day that the Lord will again redeem a second time with his hand the remnant of his people who remain from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He will lift up a banner for the nations and assemble the dispersed of Israel and gather the scattered of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Ephraim's envy will end. Those hostile to Judah will be cut off. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, and Judah will not harass Ephraim. They will swoop down on the Philistine slope to the west. Together they will plunder the children of the east, laying their hand on Edom and Moab, the children of Ammon, obeying them. Then Adonai will dry up the gulf of the Egyptian sea. He will wave his hand over the river with a scorching wind and, and will strike it into seven streams and let men walk over in sandals. So there will be a highway for the remnant of his people who remain from Assyria as there was for Israel in the day they came up out of the land of Egypt. Chapter 12, Wells of Salvation. In that day you will say, I will give you thanks, Adonai, for, for though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord Adonai is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, give thanks to Adonai, proclaim his name, declare his works to the people so they remember his exalted name. Sing to Adonai, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. And that is the second reading of the half Torah portion. And this portion regards the messianic time to come. He foretells of a staff from the shoot of Jesse, father of King David, upon whom the divine spirit will rest. And who will be able to judge honestly by way, but by, you know, by his righteousness? And that is Yeshua. And Isaiah the prophet also tells us the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie with the kid goat and the calf and the young lion will graze together and a young lad shall lead them. You know, a child will lead them. He continues to describe how Adonai will gather the exiled Jews from all over the world to bring them back home to the Holy Land, which that is happening now. Um, Aliyah is going on, um, and, and many have gone back. In the newly constituted Jewish kingdom, the ancient rivalry between Judah and Ephraim will end, and they will join forces to subdue their historic enemies. At that time, Israel will sing Adonai's praises, thanking him for all that he did and does for them, even that which had once appeared to be punishment, but has now been revealed to be goodness in disguise for them. And the last reading of the half Torah portion is Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 24 to 37, verse 14. A new heart and a new spirit. Now, this is another parallel. You know, when you think about that title, a new heart and a new spirit. Well, who gave that to us? Yeshua. Um, for I will take you from the nations, gather you out from all the countries and bring you back to your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit within you. I will remove the stony heart from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my ruach within you. And this is exactly what happens when you're born again, you know, because of Yeshua. So this is definitely, um, this is prophetic. Because the prophet Ezekiel has written this. Then I will cause you to walk in my law so you will keep my rulings and do them. Then you will live in the land that I give, that I gave to your fathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. So I will save you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and make it plentiful. I will not bring a famine upon you. I will multiply the, fly the fruit of the tree and the produce of the field so that you will no longer 
bear the disgrace of famine among the nations. When you remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, you will be disgusted with yourself because of your iniquities and your abominations. Not for your sake will I do this. It is a declaration of Adonai. Let that be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, house of Israel. Thus says Adonai Elohim, in that day that I pronounce you clean from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited and the ruins will be rebuilt. The land that was desolate will be tilled instead as of being a wasteland in the sight of all that has passed by. And, and that is so with the land of Israel. It had been a wasteland and it is no longer a wasteland. It has lush vegetation and it is prospering. They will say, this land that was a wasteland has become like the Garden of Eden. The waste, desolate, and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left all around you will know that I, Adonai, have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted what was desolate. I, Adonai, have spoken it, so I will do it. Thus says Adonai Elohim, I will again be inquired of by the house of Israel to do for it for them. I will populate them with people like a flock, like the holy flock, like the flock of Jerusalem during her Moedim. So the waste cities will be filled with flocks of people, then they will know that I am Adonai. And chapter 37, dry bones live. The hand of Adonai was upon me. The Ruach Adonai carried me out and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. Behold, there were very many on the floor of the valley. Behold, they were very dry. Then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, Adonai Elohim, you know. Prophesy over these bones, he said to me. Say to them, dry bones, hear the words of Adonai. Thus says Adonai Elohim to these bones. Behold, I will cause I will cause Ruach to enter you so you will live. I will attach tendons to you, bring flesh on you, and cover you with skin. Then I will put breath in you. You will live. You will know that I am Adonai. So I prophesied, just as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, an earthquake. Then the bones came together, bone to its bone. I saw, and behold, there were tendons on them. Flesh came up on skin, covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the Ruach. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the Ruach, thus says Adonai Elohim, come from the four winds, Ruach, breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied just as he commanded. The Ruach came into them and they lived. They stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are cut off by ourselves. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I will open your graves, I will bring you up out of your graves, my people. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. You will know that I am Adonai. When I have opened your graves and brought you up out of your graves, my people, I will put my ruach in you and you will live. I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, Adonai, have spoken and that I have done it. It is a declaration of Adonai. Now we can look at this from two parallels because we can we can certainly look at this at, at Aliyah, Aliyah. But we can also look at this as um, Yeshua. Yeshua, I mean, brought us up from 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 the grave because uh, the wages of sin are death. So by what he has done, his finished work on the cross uh, has enabled us to also um, have eternal life. So that's another parallel here. There's so many different parallels here. Um, so we are, you know, we were, you know, we were dead because of our sins, and and no longer are we dead because of sins because Yeshua was a Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. And if we repent and call on the name of Yeshua, accept him as our Lord and Savior, and I will be doing an altar call for those who have not done that, uh, to, to give that opportunity as always, um, then we shall be saved. And given the gift of that eternal life that, that comes with that, so Ezekiel, uh, we were we were reading about uh, the the Valley of Dry Bones. 
So God has brought to life the night Israel. God brings us to life, revives us. You know, revival is is also a, a, another parallel of you know bringing those dry bones to life. Um, the church needs to wake up. We need to come into that revival mode. We need to be on fire for God. This is the time um, that that needs to be happening. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to close this portion out. Um, this is probably going to be the longer portion of Shabbat service. Um, but I'm going to close this out and we'll take a short break. And then we'll come back with um, the second part of Shabbat. Um, we will read the Brit Kadashah portion for this week and do an altar call. And then we will close out Shabbat service for this week. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this time that we have to spend in your word. This time that we can look at your word in, in, in detail as we read it. And let it, let it be planted in our hearts. Let it be part of us. We thank you, Father God, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you're about to do. And we thank the Holy Spirit for leading us, for guiding us through this segment of Shabbat service, as always, opening our eyes so that we can be receptive to, to what, what we are hearing. So we can, in turn, be good stewards of your word as well. We thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And go ahead and take a short break and we'll come back for the second portion of Shabbat service. <laughs> 